Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Reading for Vocabulary. Are you interested in continuing our subject here? We're, of course, on Unit 4. We're talking about world connections. So it's very interesting looking at different places around the world and also thinking about how people have traveled from place to place. In Lesson 11, we're talking about a quick bite to eat. So we're not going to be focusing on transportation. We're going to be talking about fast food. Because, of course, in our lives, as we're very busy traveling from place to place, it's very easy to get food very quickly. And we're talking about fast food in this section. So that will be our reading passage. But again, of course, we need to study the vocabulary that we will encounter in the passage. So let's begin. The first word on our list today is a difficulty or an issue. So if you have a difficulty or if there's some issue that you have to deal with, we call that a problem, problem. Now it's very interesting because I'd like to point out something. Problem and issue have become kind of uh, not interchangeable but uh, substituted. In America, many people will say issue instead of saying problem. For example, why? Because problem is negative. Issue sounds more neutral. So, for example, Americans, instead of saying, do you have a problem, they will say, is there an issue with this? Because do you have a problem is very direct and sounds negative. But if you change it and you say, is there an issue with this whatever? then that sounds more neutral. It doesn't sound as rude and it doesn't sound as negative. So it's very interesting I've noticed over maybe the last 10 or 20 years that Americans have stopped using problem, especially in like polite situations like business situations or things like that. People have stopped using problem and they're starting to use the word issue much more often because problem sounds negative. And problem is negative. If you have a problem with something, that is a negative situation. Issue, though, can be, sounds more neutral or not as negative. Okay, next one. Two, where and how something began. So we think about a game like chess, or we think about a, a certain type of dress, or a certain type of doing things. Where did it begin? What was the origin? Origin. Where did it start? Where did it begin? That's the origin. How and where something began. Number three, able to be used or taken. Able to be used or taken, we say it's available. If there is a seat empty in a restaurant, you can say, is this seat available? Can I sit there? Can I use it? Can I take it? If you go somewhere and you want to be able to use a piece of equipment. For example, you go to a bowling alley and there's some shoes on the shelf. Are they available? Yes, you can use those shoes to go bowling, right? So are they available? You can use them or you can take them. It is available. Next one, to ask for an item or meal from a business. When you go to the restaurant and you ask for an item or you ask for a meal, right? What are you doing? What are you, it's called an order. I think you say in Korean, jumun, jumun hesel, have you ordered, have you ordered, uh, would you like to order, or uh, if I'm a waiter, right, I say to the customer, would you like to order, are you ready to order now, if I'm the customer, I say, excuse me, I would like to order now, this is my order, okay, so order, you ask for an item or a meal from a business, not just in a restaurant. Item, if you're online, you're doing internet shopping, then you also can order products from a business. Order an item, some type of product. So that we say order, that's a specific verb for that action. Five, easy and quick to do, well, it's very convenient. That word just kind of slid right on in there, very conveniently, right? It was easy and quick to do. It's convenient. Modern life is very convenient, isn't it? We just hit some keys on our keyboard and somebody comes to our door and gives us a package. Wow, how convenient is that? We don't even have to leave our house anymore to get items from the store. Okay, next one. Possibly dangerous, <clears throat> not joking. These two men, do they look happy? 
Well, no, they don't look happy. Doesn't look like their team. Of course, they look, they're dressed very funnily. They're sports fans, obviously, but they don't look happy. They look very serious. They're not joking, and uh, it, it says possibly dangerous. But I don't want to say that these guys are possibly dangerous. But other situations can be described as serious. For example, uh, conditions outside, weather conditions are serious. That could be possibly dangerous. If you hear that on the news, be careful. If the TV or the radio announcer says weather conditions are serious, that means there's a lot of snow. Maybe there's ice or maybe there's a lot of rain and there's a possibility of flooding. It could be dangerous. So there are serious weather conditions outside. But serious doesn't always mean dangerous. It can mean, but like these guys, they're not joking. They're not happy. They're thinking about something very hard. They're very serious. But I, I wouldn't say these guys are dangerous. <laughs> okay, it depends on the situation. Okay, next one. Taking almost no time to make. What is this? Of course, that's ramen, right? It takes almost no time to make. In America, people will usually say instant, instant ramen, or another word for ramen is. Instant noodles. Okay, but we use the word instant because it takes almost no time to make. Now, a long time ago, when you, if you wanted to have noodle soup, you had to take a lot of time. You had to buy the noodles. You had to cook them, boil them for a long time, you know, with water, and then go and get other spices and put that in. It took a while to make that. But with instant ramen, all you do is heat water, pour the water in there, keep it. Uh, closed for about a minute, open it up and eat it. It's almost no time to make. You don't have to worry. It's already prepackaged. It's already prepared for you. Okay, so it's very instant. You can make it very quickly. Instant. Eight. Throughout the world. So something that is spread throughout the world is worldwide. And we use this、uh, suffix, this ending. For the word,、uh, quite a bit, right? Worldwide, company wide, throughout the entire company, region wide, nation wide, throughout the region, throughout the nation, and of course, we're talking about the whole world, worldwide. So wide is a common ending,、uh, especially at the end of a,、uh, some type of area, nation, region, company. And when you're talking about an area, to mean that it's throughout the entire area. Throughout the world, throughout the company, throughout the nation, worldwide, company-wide, nationwide. Okay. Nine, Mashita, are you hungry? This looks like a good snack, and it's a healthy snack too, isn't it? It's a fruit that comes from tropical countries like the Philippines, Thailand, especially Hawaii. Right? Hawaii has specialized in growing these. Right? What is it? What kind of fruit? It's a pineapple. Pine apple. Of course, they're not apples that grow on pine trees. <laughs> a different kind of tree, right? I'm not sure where the word pineapple came from, but it's a special kind of fruit that grows in tropical countries. Pineapple, good, good snack,、uh, good food for a snack. Okay, next one. A liquid that goes with another food. So a lot of foods that you eat, especially if you go to like a, a restaurant like TGI Fridays or some other place like that, and you have chicken wings, they usually have some other. It's like a liquid. It's a very thick liquid, right? It's not a liquid. Not, it's not like water. Although some can be thin, it's called a sauce. A sauce. Usually they're kind of thick, and you dip your food into it, right? A liquid that goes with goes with another food. So you either dip your liquid into it, or you pour it on top of your meal, and that, of course, is a sauce. Next one. Speed in action. This person is in a hurry. In a hurry. So that's a common expression in English when somebody is. Uh, moving quickly, they're walking quickly, they're acting, or you, it doesn't even mean they're moving from one place to another. You could be sitting at your desk working quickly. You are in a hurry. So in a hurry means to do something quickly or means to do something、uh, very fast. Okay, next one. The amount of food eaten for one meal. So if you only eat one of these bowls and that's your entire meal, we call that a serving. One serving. Usually,、uh, people will say, "I will." Well, it's 
no, actually not usually, it's just say I'll have uh, the steak and fries. That's one serving of a steak and fries. Or I'll have a bowl of soup. That's one serving. If you want two servings, that means you have another bowl of soup. So one serving, two servings. There are two servings here. So the amount of food eaten for one meal, okay? Uh, sometimes people will have a lot of servings for their meal, right? But it's a serving, okay? It's typical. But some people are so hungry, they want more than the typical amount, so they have another serving, okay? 13, a business that has many copies of its stores. Of course, you guys know McDonald's. McDonald's is everywhere, right? They're in almost every, I think they're in every country except for North Korea, uh, but they're almost everywhere in the world, right? Uh, a business that has many copies of its stores, we call McDonald's a chain store. And there are many types of chain stores. Of course, McDonald's is perhaps the most famous one because it's the most popular one, but there's other different restaurants. I mentioned TGI Fridays before. TGI Fridays is a chain restaurant. Outback is a chain restaurant, but it's not just restaurants. It can also be stores, right? For example, you could have like Macy's. Macy's could be a chain store in different, in different cities, right? Uh, because they're a large department store. They're not just in New York. There are also many other cities in America. Uh, so a department store could be a chain store. Uh, uh, lots of different businesses that have uh, shops in different areas or different regions, they are also called chain stores. Okay, the next word here is kind of funny, cow meat. Now, of course, we don't say cow meat in America. That's a very strange word. It's kind of like saying pada gogi for fish, right? That sounds weird. No, you say bulgogi or you say sengsun, right? Uh, so you have special words for different types of meat. And if you, I mean, if you say cow meat in America, people will understand. They'll just think, oh, that sounds funny. It's like me going into a restaurant and saying, yes, I would like some pada gogi, please. The restaurant people will probably understand what I mean, but they'll think, well, this American is strange. You know, some weird Korean, right? So don't go to America and say, I'd like some cow meat, right? Right? Say you would like some beef, right? So gogi is beef in English, okay? Okay, next one is 15. What you put on top of food. So things that you put on top of food, especially on top of ice cream, right? That's, these are uh, probably things that you put on top of ice cream. You get hungry. Um, we call them toppings, right? So especially if you go to a place um, like Baskin Robbins, sometimes they'll have different toppings on your ice cream, but especially Cold Stone, you know, near the Cold Stone ice cream chain store, they have many different toppings that you can put on your food. It's not just ice cream. Again, it could be uh, a meal, it could be steak, it could be pasta. Uh, what is the topping that you put on it? Especially pizza, when you think about pizza, has many different toppings and you choose which topping you want on your food. Next one is 16, made ready to use before it's needed. So if you make something now, but you don't need it now, you need it an hour from now, or you need it maybe tomorrow, what do you do? It's prepared. You prepare that food, so after you prepare it, it is prepared. And by the way, it's not just food, okay? You could prepare other things. For example, you could prepare your homework the night before it's due. Is your homework done? Yes, it's prepared for tomorrow. So something that's prepared is made ready to use before it's needed. The teacher doesn't need your homework at 10 o'clock at night, right? The teacher needs your homework the next morning, but you should prepare it the night before so it's done. Your mother does the same thing when she cooks meals, right? Uh, many moms will, will prepare meals. They'll put them in the refrigerator and then take them out and warm them up for the dinner because many moms are, are busy these days. Sometimes though, they'll prepare a meal for a few hours before dinner time. Right? So they might start cooking at 4 p.m., but you don't eat until 6, right? So that's prepared. They prepared the meal for you. Okay. Let's go over the words. What, uh, what are the words that we've just learned? How well do you remember them? Let's go over the exercises. The first one, number one, I beep a new sweater. It will come in the mail soon. It will come in the mail soon. So if, what do you do 
you know, a new sweater, could be anything really, but you, it'll come in the mail soon. What word did we talk about that would fit here? A, grabbed, B, made, C, ordered, D, sold. Well, A, grabbed just means to go and grab something. If you grabbed a new sweater, it's not going to come in the mail soon. You have it in your hand. You grabbed it, right? So, and you shouldn't grab things. That's not polite. Okay, so not grabbed. B, I made a new sweater. If you made the sweater, you have it, right? It's not going to come in the mail. You have it now. So made doesn't fit. I ordered a new sweater. Ah, that makes sense, right? You order the sweater on the computer or you order it on the phone and then the company will send it to you in the mail. So that's the answer. I ordered a new sweater. It will come in the mail soon. What about D? I sold a new sweater. I sold a new sweater? That doesn't make sense because it will come. If you sell a sweater, you're going to send it through the mail. It's not going to come to you. You're going to send it away. So that doesn't make sense. Okay. Number three, I'm sorry, but we have no tables, beep, okay? Remember when we talked about this word, I used the example of the chair. If there is a chair that is empty, that you can use it, right? It is what? Well, same thing about a table. You go into a restaurant and there is an empty table, right? Nobody is sitting there, then that table is what? But if you go in the restaurant and the waiter says, I'm sorry, but we have no tables for your use, no tables out, no tables instant, no tables serious, or no tables available. Well, right away we can see available. I'm sorry, but we have no tables available. No tables are ready for your use. Not out, not instant, that doesn't make sense, and not, we have no tables that are serious. That's just silly, right? So, I'm sorry, but we have no tables available. This one we see right away. Uh, no tables that are ready for your use. No tables available. Six, that was a beep test. I don't know it would be so hard. And of course we have a or an because some of the answers start with a vowel. One answer starts with a vowel. So what was it? That was a what kind of test. A what kind of test is a hard test? What kind of test is a hard test? A difficult test? Orum down, right? Himdoreo, right? Um, a quick test? No. <laughs> Hard tests are not quick. Um, B, a convenient test. Convenient means easy, so that's not true. It's a hard test. It's an instant test. Instant and quick are similar, right? But that doesn't make sense. It was a serious, yeah, it was a serious test. It was difficult. Remember, serious doesn't always mean dangerous. A test cannot be dangerous, but it can be very difficult or severe, right? Serious. It can be a serious test. That teacher is not joking around. The teacher is very serious about us learning the material. So, that was a serious test. It was a difficult test. Seven, don't forget, kiyokajimaseo, right? Don't forget, dogs had their beep as wolves. Now, this one is interesting. You have to think about this a little bit. Um, but what you need to know, of course, and I mentioned this in a previous lesson a long time ago, all dogs, all modern dogs now, came from wolves, right? So all modern dogs descended from wolves. You think about your, your dog at home, right? Whether it's a beagle or it's a husky, a big dog, you know, their ancestors were wolves. A long time ago, there were no dogs that people had as pets. There were wolves. And all those wolves, their babies, after many generations, evolved into different types of dogs. Uh, dogs that people have in their homes. So dogs had their what as wolves? It has their future, had their origin, had their problem, or had their mistake? Well, remember, how and where something, or how and when or where something got started is their origin. How did dogs come about? Well, their origin is wolves, right? After thousands of years of breeding, human beings have helped wolves, well, helped wolves or made wolves evolve into dogs, right? So um, the origin, but all dogs came from wolves. So dogs' origin is wolves. Not future, that doesn't make sense. Not problem, that's weird, and mistake. Problem and mistake are similar, but they don't fit here. The best word, of course, is origin. All modern dogs had their origin as wolves. Very interesting. Okay, well that 
wraps up the vocabulary part of this lesson. Let's take a short break. We'll come back and let's go over the reading passage together. So don't go away.